guys, happy belated Thanksgiving, and if you're in a time crunch for presents, obviously, to crochet, um, then this might be a good option. So this is just a little crocheted sweater for a dog. Um, this can be adjustable to any size. Uh, the way that I'm going to be doing the pattern here is um, I'll stop. Um, every once in a while I'll let you know um, when you need to measure on your dog to make this adjustable. Um, when I was looking for um, crochet sweater videos and uh, patterns tutorials, they were um, all just the regular like uh, sweater. It didn't ever have the legs on it. Um, but this is the kind of sweater that I really wanted because this kind of hugs the whole body and um, actually grips onto the gets onto the legs too. So um, it just keeps them a lot warmer. Um, they're really more considered pajamas than um, a sweater. I think that's what I have it labeled under uh, on my post. Um, but I'm going to get started and I'm going to be crocheting through the whole thing. And the way that this works is I'm going to start, obviously, um, well, on the back. I'm going to be starting here um, and make this portion first and then I'll move on to the legs and then we'll move up the torso into the top of the body. There will be um, a, a way for you to adjust it to the size of your particular dog. Okay, so I'm going to get started and we are going to start with a slip knot. So for a slip knot you wrap the yarn around your finger twice. This is the method that I use. Take the furthest back piece, it's connected to your yarn, bring it over the closest piece to the tail, then you bring this piece over the piece that you just moved and over the top of your finger all the way over and then pull the tail and that's your slip knot. This is really easy, you'll get used to doing that faster. I'm going to be using a size H hook and this is a medium four worsted weight yarn. Um, I'm using red, this is kind of just a one color project. Okay, so what you want to do first is chain just enough to fit over the tail of your dog. So I've chained 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Um, yeah, I think maybe one less. I'm a very small dog, so this right here is it for me. This is just enough to fit over um, this section here. So from leg to leg, but just over the top of the butt. And you don't want to chain too far down, you just want to be right over the tail. So with what you have already chained, you're going to want to go ahead and do a turning chain, one extra. And then you're going to go into the second chain from your hook and do a single crochet and a single crochet all the way So now that we've single crocheted all the way across, we're going to make our turning chain and we're going to come back around. We're going to crochet an increase. And whenever you're increasing, you want to increase at the ends, here and here. So we're going to do one crochet like we normally would into the first and then we're going to do another. And then you crochet all the way through the row. Make it all the way to the end. Don't forget this last loop. All the way to the end. And then you want to make another increase. Basically you just Go into the same one twice. And now we're going to do our turning chain and turn back around. This is where it changes up for um, people that care to do the back loop crocheting to keep it all uniform on one side. So if you're crocheting um, in the round here, 
um, and then you're regular, doing a regular crochet here, it just doesn't match and doesn't look the same. So you want a back loop so that you can get ready to crochet in the round and make that look uniform. Um, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to do that. It'd be easier. So this is the way that I'm going to do it, just so that they match. You're going to crochet into the back loop. So what you see here is the front. Let me pull this out. You can see this is the front loop and this is the back loop. So front loop, back loop. Because you're crocheting this way, that's why this is. You're crocheting on this side, that's why the ones on this side would be the front loop. So this is the back loop. The problem is, if you crochet on this side, you'll get left with a little line here. Not an issue. That's the way normal single crocheting work looks. I just prefer for um, a uniform kind of texture on this side, so I crochet in the back loops, and you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Certainly is a lot easier, but you're still going to be doing a single crochet, and that's going to be an increase, so you're going to be doing two single crochets. You're just going to single crochet back and forth, making an increase on each side of your work. So this last one, I'm going to do two single crochets. And you can see that it's beginning to kind of increase. So you want to do this over and over until you reach the front part of their hind uh, quarter. And I'll show you, um, is that the hind quarter? I wonder, but I'll show you um, what that is. Okay, so here we have <laughs> this poor drawing of a puppy dog. I don't know why his tail is so pointy. Um, okay, so just ignore that. Um, but so you've already chained um, back here. Just this little bit of a chain. Oh my goodness, this is so terrible. So you're going to crochet back and forth until, and it's obviously going to increase, it's going to come out a little bit, until you get to this point right here. Um, because you want to come over far enough to where you're not catching the little bit of skin that's here. Um, you want to be able to make, because we're going to make legs for this, so it's going to be like a little cuff that comes down. So you want to come over far enough to where it's comfortable for them because of the slope of skin. I don't know if you can see this focused or not, um, but yeah. So that's why we're coming over so far as to avoid that lip of skin. So you just want to crochet until you reach that for your dog. For me, it's going to be pretty soon. He's such a small dog, but um, the larger your dog is, the more um, single crochets you want to do back and forth here, or back and forth in this direction, um, to come out here to get to their hind quarter. Okay, so I reached the end of this row, and I'm going to do my turning chain. Make sure that I'm in focus, move the camera. Um, and then I'm going to come back on the other side. And I'm going to do an increase. And then I'm going to single crochet. And every single crochet across the row. So we're going to make an increase here as well, turning chain, come back around because I'm doing back loop, you're crocheting into the back loop, but ignore that, just crochet as you normally would, doing an increase of course. Do an increase at the end of the row. So we've reached the end of the row. 
I'm going to turning chain, single crochet back. Make an increase there, I just did. And turning chain. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and check it for my dog. This part just goes over the butt here. So this is gonna be draped just like this. This is how you wanna check it on your dog. And we're gonna come up here. And so because he has this little lip of skin, I wanna come up far enough and I would say just about right here. So I've got another maybe inch and a half to go. Some things to note, the pattern that I'm making is for a boy dog because he has to um, pee. So <laughs> we obviously are going to leave kind of, you know, a little bit of room for that and for female dogs as well. I'm not sure if you'd have to leave the same amount of room. Maybe you want to leave less room, but I will explain how to do that. So like I said, I got it maybe an inch and a half more to go. All right, and I believe I've already done my turning chain. I'm going to do an increase. So I'm going to do that and then single crochet all the way across this row. Okay, so single crochet twice in the same. Um, when I've completed this row, you can kind of start seeing what I mean, what the back looks like versus what the front looks like. This is where we're going to begin the next portion going to add some length to this part um, so that we can get a good point to start the cuff. What we've done is we've come up all the way here, but if we start to make the cuff here, it's too soon because he's still got his belly. So we've got to kind of come down a little bit, add some length here um, before we can uh, actually start the cuff. So I'm going to go ahead and chain one extra. And then you just want to single crochet down. So on this first row, you're not really worried about numbering. You just want to kind of close up all these little areas where you have maybe like a little hole there. Not really a hole, but you know. So I'm actually going to single crochet. And then once you reach the end, just like that. So now we're crocheting across this. So you see how I've turned my work this way so that I can work like this. And I'm going to start some crocheting here. I'm going to do a turning chain and I'm going to come back. Now at this point I'm going to be back loop crocheting. Um, because this is the front of my work, and then this is the back of my work, and I want to leave all the lines on the back. And I'm going to go into this chain here. So, oops, single crochet all the way down this row. Okay. So I'm going to do the last one, turn and chain. And I'm just going to keep going back and forth until I add some a significant amount of length here. Such so a single crochet across the row.
turning chain. Turn and work around. Same crochet again. And in this one, I'm going to be doing the back loops. Okay, so I'm just adding some length. Turning chain. So I'm going to crochet all the way across the row. Turning chain. <clears throat> Again, I'm going to be going into the back loops. Okay, so now you can kind of see the amount of length that we've added. You might need to add more. So you can see where this is going to go right over his hind quarter here and here is centered it right over the hind quarter yeah I think he really just needs one more row and then you can start doing the cuff I'm going to be doing one more row and since that row is going to be my last one I'm going to do an increase on each end so I'm going to be going into this first single crochet do a single crochet on top of it but I'm going to go ahead and do another one and then I'm going to single crochet in every single, over every single crochet across the row. And then, got to make sure I get that last one. And then I'm going to single crochet twice. So single crochet two times into the same space. That's an increase. I've increased to the other end as well. What you're going to do is chain a little bit extra so that you have the space to bring this around and fit all the way around his leg. So from where this is at on his tail, you want to be able to bring this all the way around. So... going to do here is start chaining. So I've chained 10. You might need to chain more if your dog has a wider um, leg. So you're going to just wrap this around the leg to see if it's enough. So we've got the chain right here on this side. And I'm just wrapping it around to see if it's enough. And then make sure you keep a note of how much you've chained because this is what you'll do on the other side as well if you don't want to have to grab them and measure it. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is join. So we've chained all the way here. Now we are going to bring this around and join to this here. Okay, so you're going to insert your hook in here, and then slip stitch to join. Okay, so now it's joined all the way over here, and you're going to now chain one, and you're going to single crochet across this whole thing in order to make the length of the cuff. Okay, so I've just joined this chain to this and you may notice I've started on my second cuff. So where we left off we were we're joining the chain here to here and it's the same exact process. So I went ahead and did this one so you join and you slip stitch. It's the same process for each leg. And then you're going to chain one, single crochet, and 
all the way across. And like I said, you're going to be crocheting in the round. You're just going to crochet all the way across here until you build a cuff that looks like this. This is about the same, I don't know if you saw me compare it to the first, my first cuff, but you're working on your first cuff, this is your first cuff, and um, so you've worked your way all the way up here to a good length, and you can check on your dog, this is a good length for um, my dog, but um, you can check, go ahead and put it around your dog's leg, but see if this is the right length for you. Um, if it is, you're going to slip stitch to level off and I'll show you what I mean. You're going to in the next couple of stitches, you want to do this on the inside of the leg so that you can't really tell. You're going to slip stitch hmm, four or five times. The more that you slip stitch in each single crochet, it'll just kind of become more level. And so you can see how it's kind of level here. Um, it's kind of come down a little bit. And um, just like that, we're done. So you can fasten off and reattach right here um, to do the second um, height and the cuff. You're doing the exact same thing on each side. So on this side we've done the height and we've done the cuff now. So you can fasten off and attach here. What I've done is I've already done the height and the cuff for this as well. But um, you can fasten off and start here and um, do your height and then do your cuff the exact same way. Or you can slip stitch back, which is my preferred method. So to do that, and I'm going to show you how to do that um, because I have to slip stitch. I'm going to slip stitch my way across to right here so that I can start the back portion um, but you would be slip stitching your way um, across to this side so you would just go down through here um, and right here so that you can do the height here and then crochet in the round which is what I did on this side I slip stitched all the way over here so how you do that is You open this up to the inside and you just start slip stitching your way down. So, um, and this isn't going to be visible from the outside, so you don't need to do it in a straight line or in a neat fashion. Okay, so just keep, keep slip stitching. Doesn't really matter where. I'm just gonna be kind of connecting it. And instead of slip stitching, it does make it a little more difficult when you slip stitch on the inside. You can slip stitch on the outside. I mean, it's not gonna be terribly visible, and if you just do a line, um, it's not gonna look bad at all. I think, just think that this looks a little bit neater. So, um, slip stitch all the way down here to the bottom. Once you get to the bottom, 
um, your yarn um, gets kind of twisted when you do that because now your yarn, you, you're working from here and your yarn is going pulled in here. So what you're going to do in order to fix that is so you're going to take this end and of course you don't have a uh, cuff on this end for you, but it's the same thing. You just take this end here and you pull it all the way through the arm. Seems kind of weird, but it works. Pull all the way through the arm, through the arm, and then turn the arm back the right way. And now the yarn is on the correct side. And you can turn it um, back like this with this side instead of being inside out. You can turn it like this so that you get your yarn right here on this side. Kind of neat little trick. And so for you, you would slip stitch your way all the way across to the other side to start the height and the cuff. It's going to be the same exact process. So once you've done all of that and you've done the other cuff, and you're finished with the second cuff, you're going to slip stitch to this part and do the back. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, and it's about here. And I'm going to stop because this is, as you can see, the top of this here. So from there, I'm going to start the back. Okay, so now that we're at this point, we're going to let me readjust here. Crochet. I think I'm going to need about four more rows. Um, single crochet. All the way here. And I'm going to crochet, I'm going to be crocheting these loops here to make sure that um, it's a uniform texture on this side as opposed to this side. So I'm going to be crocheting in these loops. Okay, so I've reached the end here, um, and the whole purpose of this is we just want to crochet enough to get out of the zone where the dog is going to be, um, because there's legs, obviously this is the belly for a male dog, um, I think for female dogs as well, you just want to crochet up, you're here, and you just want to crochet up enough to where you can get out of the P zone where they're going to be um, peeing, give them just enough space um, so they don't end up uh, actually peeing on the sweater. So we're going to do that. Just crochet back and forth a bit. So I'm going to do a turning chain. And then I'm going to crochet on the back loops.
Okay, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and check. So this obviously drapes over, and you can go ahead and tuck in the feet. So the one foot, and the second one. Okay, this makes a little bit more sense when it's completed. Um, but basically this is how this is going to fit over their rear end. Um, and for him, it needs to be up a little bit more. Maybe another two inches or so before I get to a point where um, I can be sure he won't be on it. Okay, so turning chain. I'm going to crochet on the back loops. Okay, so I think I'm a couple rows in and I think I'm going to check this on my dog now. So I think this is just going to hang over his butt. I think this is actually where I'm at right now might actually be long enough. Now, you may have to um, do a lot more than you expected for your dog. So this is a good spot for me. You may need to go up a lot more or maybe less. Um, and then you can chain however much. You're just going to have to eye it and see what works. So with what I've chained, can I connect here? Okay, so I've connected and I'm crocheting all the way around. Okay. So we're just going to keep crocheting across, and this is crocheting in the round at this point. Okay, I'm just going to keep doing that.
So you're just going to crochet in the round all the way up until you get to um, a point. Obviously, we're only a little bit of the way. But until you get to a point um, the, in this dog, um, this Yorkie, as opposed to the one I'm doing now, had kind of a, um, a much uh, longer body. But you're going to crochet up to the point where you get to their arms. So crochet until you get to just underneath their arms. And then we'll do this part. So you're just going to keep crocheting in the round all the way up. I'm going to need a couple more inches. Okay, um, now we're at a point where we're going to start the arms. We've already got enough length this way. So the arms are going to be right here. We're just going to make chaining spaces for the arms. So the way that that works is you just chain about the space you think that your dog is going to need for the arms. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is I think what I want. Maybe ten. Okay, so then we skip. So you chain the number that you want and then you skip. One, two, three. Let me see that this is in focus. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. You just want to make sure that it's even on the other side. But I think that this is a large enough hole. You don't just want to make the hole in the front. You want to also add a little bit to the back. That's why I've started back here instead of just starting in the front. So just keep that in mind. So once you skip the amount that you need, you're going to connect with a single crochet. And then single crochet for the middle part of the chest. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I think I'm going to need about six for the middle. It really depends on um, what size your dog is. So I think we've got ten here. And then there's six in the middle. And that would mean one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I think that that works out. Okay, so you're going to chain the exact same space. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So since mine was ten before, I'm going to chain ten again and skip the same amount of space. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then single crochet in that space. And then just single crochet in a couple spaces afterwards. That way you can get a good look at what it is going to look like and I think that's about even and that should fit so then you're just going to keep single crocheting in the round as you normally would So you just want to get a couple rows in. You can kind of see what this is going to look like. These holes here. 
And you can leave it like this. You just have holes for their um, feet to come out. Um, and that looks fine. Um, or you can, what we're going to do is go back and make the cuff after we complete the neck. So we're going to do the neck right now. Um, so just make sure that you go in a couple, do a couple of rows here, but as much as you think you'll need. And then, um, here is the finished one. Show you with this one. So after this is the armhole. So after you make the armholes, you're really not gonna um, need to do much. The space between the shoulders and the neck really isn't that much um, for your dog. Um, what you do want to do in the next couple of um, rows. As you're doing them, just make um, decreases um, in order to fit to a smaller size for the neck. And obviously, um, you want to make it bigger than the neck is. That way, it's not too um, snug on their neck. Um, you can even make the neck really long and then just fold it back to have it look like a turtleneck. Um, or you can make the neck really short, um, you can get tighter or looser or, sc or scooped. Um, the neck is really just kind of up to you. But um, in any case, in the way that I'm going to do this one um, is I'm just going to decrease, just like I have here. Not too much, but um, just enough to where it just is more um, tailored to his neck. And then I'll show you. After you complete the neck, you're going to slip stitch all the way down to the arm and then you're going to create the cuff for the arm, just like this, um, and crochet in the round um, for the arm and then after you complete one arm, you slip stitch from that arm to the other arm and do the exact same thing, um, crocheting in the round to make the cuff. And we'll do that. So after the whole thing is finished, you can trim it like I have. So at this point, we're going to actually start to do decreases. And like I've um, said before, you decrease at the ends. So at the sides, you want to decrease. So on the side and on the side. If you need to make it really small, really fast, because um, the distance between the shoulders and the neck is smaller for your dog, then you're going to want to do more decreases. And you can just kind of space those, like kind of sprinkle those in <laughs> per row. Um, but the way that you do decrease is go into the single crochet, yarn over, pull your yarn through, and then you go into another single crochet, yarn over, and pull your yarn through. You'll only have three on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three, so that now you only have one here, as opposed to having two, and that's the um, classic way to do a decrease, and then you just keep single crocheting all the way around. And then you'll do that again when you get to the other side. Okay, so we're now at the other side and I'm going to do another decrease. So I'm just going to go into this space, the single crochet, yarn over and pull through, into the next, yarn over and pull through. Got three on my hook now. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all three. So now, after you've done this decrease, you're just gonna keep single crocheting around. I'm gonna do another decrease. Let me focus. Just like that. And I think I'm going to do another one after that. Just to decrease it even more. 
and then single crochet all the way around. Okay, so I just did a decrease, and I'm going to do another one. You just kind of want to balance out what you do on one side to the other side. But at this point, you're really just kind of eyeing it to see how small you want it. There's really no perfect way. I'm going to go ahead and try this on my dog. He needs a lot more space between here and here. So we're going to need to do a lot more rows, but we don't necessarily want to decrease too much. Alright, so since I'm on this side, I'm going to do one decrease on this side. And single crochet in the round all the way. Okay, so I'm going to do another decrease right here. And then I think it's going to be my last decrease. I'm just going to keep crocheting in the round for a couple more rows. Okay, so I just did two more rows, and I think that's going to be about it for me. So once you reach the point where you're at the top of the neck, and it's a good um, place where you can leave off, what you're going to do is um, slip stitch to level off, which is exactly what we did with the cuffs, and so we're going to do the exact same thing. So what you do, and you want to be on the underside so that this isn't very visible, you just want to begin to slip stitch. Like I've said before, the more that you slip stitch, the more leveled off it's going to get. Okay, so once you're done with this, if you don't want to do the cuffs for the sleeves, for the front of the arms, then you're done, and you can stop here, and the pajamas are complete. But if you want to do the cuff, then this is what you do. You're going to have to slip stitch down to one of the arms. You can do that on the outside, which is a little bit easier, or you can do that on the inside, which I'm going to do, that way you, you can't see um, where it's been slip stitched. So, you're just going to slip stitch your way down, it's really not important what pieces you grab onto. Just all the way down to the arm. Just like that. So once you've gotten all the way down to the arm, you can now um, turn your work inside out and pull the um, from the inside here. Pull all of this through. Okay, so that now your yarn is right here. Alright, and then you can, working inside out, make your um, cuff. So you're just going to single crochet over the edge. So.
I'm just going to begin to single crochet. You could also fasten off and attach to the arm if you don't want to slip stitch all the way down. Okay, so then keep going. And just keep crocheting in the round until you make a cuff. Okay, so I'm a couple rows in on this little cuff of a sleeve. You can see that here. Um, let me make sure I'm in focus. Yeah, so you can see that here. Um, I'm a couple rows in, and this is big enough for his arm, but I think I just want it to be a little more snug to his arm. And if you find that you want yours to be a little more snug um, to your dog's arm as well, you want to go ahead and decrease um, once every row when you're going around and it's important to note that the place you want to decrease is um, near the back not near the belly so decrease on this side so I'm going to use that one as my first one so I'm going to pull through I'm going to pull through on that one and then there's one decrease I'm going to go ahead and do another decrease. Two right next to each other. And then I'm just going to keep crocheting. Nearing um, where I'm going to want to stop. Um, this is about as tall as I really need it. I think I'm gonna finish off. So once you get to the length that you want then you're just gonna level this off by slip stitching. Okay and so now you're done with this sleeve. So now you gotta get to the other sleeve. You can fasten off and reattach or you can slip stitch. Since we're already inside out, this is so much easier. We're just going to slip stitch our way to the other arm. And to um Do a single crochet all the way around. So you're just going to keep going until you reach the same length of the other arm. Okay, so you can see here that I've already gone up a couple rows on my second cuff and it just about matches the first one. So what I'm going to do now, since I'm finished and I decreased just like I did on the other one, you want to do this one the exact same way because you want them to match. So now you're going to slip stitch to level off, just like we did the last time. And that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch this all the way down to right there. You're just going to cut this right here and take this loop that you made 
pull this through and that's not going to come undone. You can weave your ends in. I like to, um, instead of using a yarn needle, just weave them in like this. Just a couple times is all it really takes. And then cut off your excess and you're done. So you can trim this now with any other color you like. Maybe some fur trim, boa trim that I used for the other one. This tail at the end, I'm just going to weave that through as well. And that's kind of the benefit of not fastening off so many times. You get a sturdier project, less tails to weave in. Okay, so you're completely finished.